Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter Stories 2. And in this one, I want to put together a quick handy guide for uh, five things that you definitely want to keep in mind whilst playing throughout the game. Things that will help you out. Just kind of useful tips that you may not necessarily have noticed. So if you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. And of course, comment down below and let me know what you guys are most looking forward to seeing. We've got plenty of Stories 2 content coming your way. So if you're playing the game, definitely keep it locked on the channel. But to begin with, in number one is an easy way to identify which monsters can be monsties in the game. As you know, you will of course encounter a wide range of monsters in the game. However, not all of them can be hatched and thus not all of them can join the team. A large portion of them can. And of course, one of the easiest ways to do that is to go into your writer's notes and you'll notice that the uh, the notes are broken up into Monsterpedia and Monstipedia. Monsterpedia is just every monster in the game. Monstipedia are of course the ones that you can hatch. However, more importantly, if you just go into the Monsterpedia, anything that is hatchable has a blue egg icon here. So if you happen to just be looking through the entire list of monsters that you've encountered and you're wondering whether or not you can add it to your team, the answer is if it doesn't have a blue egg here, then it is not a hatchable monster. Moving on from there to number two, how to retreat monsters. Now, of course, when it comes to playing throughout the game, when you fight monsters, provided they are, of course, hatchable, as we've just discussed, then uh, what you need to do if you're fighting them, you want to get them to a state whereby they retreat because in doing so, they will then go back to a guaranteed den. You go to that den, you get the egg and you are guaranteed to get that monster. Now, of course, for the most part, when you're in battle, you can, of course, throw a paintball and this will increase the retreat rate of the monster. It only works or applies for three turns. So ideally, you will be using this towards the end of a battle when the monster is getting incredibly low. So you know that within the next three turns, you're going to win. However, a paintball does not always guarantee a retreat. So if you want to increase the chances, if you actually take a look at the monster in the Monsterpedia and you tab over to the second page down here, you will actually see it has not only details on where you can find it, but it also has details on how to increase the retreat rate. Sometimes it will be something like break the head with a pierce weapon, break the tail with a slashing weapon. Sometimes it's slightly more specific, especially when you get to sort of fighting some of the uh, Fated Four. It might be that you need to defeat that monster with another monster or things like that. And early on, a lot of them are pretty simple, just down to kind of breaks. Some of the ones later on are slightly more specific, like I just mentioned, defeating it with a particular monster. But if you want to increase the chances, you don't always need to do this. Sometimes throwing a paintball is enough. However, in the event that you're throwing a paintball and you're defeating it and it's not retreating, then you can increase your chances by doing this. So read the book. Of course, you will need to have defeated it once or encountered it once to at least get this information. But once you've done that, if you're trying to look for another one, a duplicate, of course, more for your team, this is what you can do. Now, moving on from there to the next thing, a quick tip on double attacks. Double attacks are, of course, a very useful move to use, very powerful move to use in battle because not only do they interrupt the enemy, therefore skipping their turn, they also give you a good deal of kinship gauge and they deal a good degree of damage. Now, for the most part, double attacks seem pretty simple. Do the same attack type as your monster, and generally speaking, it will be a double attack, but there is some nuance here. It is worth noting that simply matching up the attack type is not always a guaranteed double attack. So if you want to actually guarantee it, there's a couple of things you need to pay attention to. If you're trying to double up with your monster, then you need to pay attention to A, whether you or your monster are being targeted. If the opposing monster is using, say, one of those moves that does not require targeting, maybe it's charging up, maybe it's doing a uh, wide AoE attack and it's therefore not targeting either yourself or your monster, then you will not do a double attack. Similarly, if you were to be attacking the same monster, but your monster attacks, say, the tail, you attack the head, it will also not result in a double attack. So the most important thing you need to look for in order to guarantee double attacks are A, the attacking line between the monster and your monster, or a yellow line between the monster and you, provided one of you are, of course, being targeted. Then outside of that, if it's you that's being targeted, you'll want to go into your monster's move list and, of course, then specify the move type and basically make sure that it is attacking the same part that you are. That should guarantee the double attack. Or similarly, if the monster is targeting your monster, then you just want to make sure that you are matching up your attack type at that same point. Do keep in mind if, of course, it is a type mismatch, i.e. your monster is going to lose a head to head, it also won't result in a double attack. So it will need to be a winning setup. But that is basically how you can determine a double attack. So pay attention to the attack type down here. Make sure that yours is the same type, the same color, so power, speed, or technical. 
Of course, make sure that that is an advantage, make sure you're being targeted, and make sure you're targeting the same points. Doing all of these does mean that you can guarantee a double attack, and this means if you set it up correctly, and you are continually being targeted, you can actually get these back-to-back -back many times. Moving on from there to the next point, this one is on the eggs, and more importantly, paying attention to Navaru's tips. Now, if you actually pay attention to the in-game tutorial for this, the wording is kind of confusing because it actually says that if you get better smelling eggs, then they have a higher chance at having rarer genes, when in reality, the way that Navaru describes them is he actually uses terminology you would associate with bad smelling eggs. So essentially, when you're digging up your eggs, you will know that Navaru gives you some feedback, his typical phrase if you pick up a regular shiny one is kinda stinky don't you thinky, this is just like a regular shiny monster. Meanwhile if you pick up say a rainbow one he'll go as far as to say that this reeks. So effectively when it comes to determining if your egg is say good, has good gene potential, what you're really looking for is both a heavy egg and also a egg that really smells basically. If you get that kind of description then you have a good inkling that when you go to hatch your egg it may well have those good genes, maybe have those rainbow genes and may have those good slots. So generally speaking you're looking for something that is heavier and something that reeks. And then finally do not sleep on your prayer pot. The prayer pot is of course a very useful tool. Not only can you go and do the basic prayer there but you can also offer charms and offering charms is something you want to be doing throughout the entire game because the prayer pot can be leveled up. Whenever you look at the buffs on the charms, you'll see they have a uh, baseline improvement they can kind of offer you as you're sort of playing throughout the game. However, if you level up your prayer pot, these percentages will increase. The prayer pot can go as high as level 20, and in order to level it up, you simply need to feed it charms. If for some reason you have forgotten about this or you just haven't been doing it, you can just dump a whole lot of charms in and it will of course level up from there. I tend to do it in like smaller increments to make sure that you're procking each level up. But the main thing is, Make sure you're using this because of course as you get towards the later part of the game and you start using these charms, having a level 20 prayer pot is going to be incredibly useful because some of those bonuses you get are very handy. So there you have it, there are five tips that you want to keep in mind as you're playing throughout the game. Again, do keep it locked, we've got some more guide content coming for you over the coming days and weeks and whatnot, so you definitely don't want to miss that stuff but for the time being, hopefully that was helpful. If you want to catch more from us at Arex Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.